let's go back a little bit to when you did actually play the good guy. Um, because one of the first times I ever saw you was way back, I believe, in 1996, when you appeared on another popular show, um, X-Files. Now, you played Fox Mulder's dad. How was that? Oh, uh, that was amazing. That was an experience of, of, of a lifetime and continues to, to keep um, bearing uh, wonderful fruit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I played young Bill Mulder uh, when the television series was at its pinnacle. Um, Absolutely, true number one hit, right? Um, and uh, and I appeared on uh, the first episode. I appeared was on Musings of a Cigarette Smoking Man, um, and uh, I got to refer to my son Fox and his first words and whatnot. I thought it was really quite a, um, I was just tickled, really. And, and, and I worked with, uh, with James Wong and, and, uh, and Chris Owens. And uh, it was really, yeah, amazing. And Chris Carter brought me into, you know, in, into the fold really very quickly. And uh, I, I also got a chance to work with uh, one, of, one of my dear friends, uh, Don Lee Rhodes, who was on that episode as well. So you keep showing up in, honestly, all of my favorite shows. Uh, every single show that you've been in over the past 26 years, I swear, is in the top of my list. We're talking things like uh, uh, Supernatural. You were on the Twilight Zone here recently. I just saw that episode. That was an awesome episode, by the way, uh, awesome. with another favorite actor of mine. I, I used to watch his TV show. Chris O'Dowd, uh, an amazing man and lovely. Yeah, right? What a great, great actor. He's not one I know for playing a serious role. How was it keeping him under wraps during your scene and, of course, uh, that, that whole episode? I'm curious how he did. Uh, again, he's a very funny guy, and it seems to just exude from him. It would seem to be a tough thing to keep him in that serious area. Well, I think that was the fun of it is, uh, is, is because the, uh, the opposites, even for both of us, you know what I mean? It was like, I was trying to be a little more, mm, you know, a little more him <laughs> and he was a little more me in that, in, in that sense. But I'll tell you in, in the green room, it, uh, he was very, you know, we were very much um, concentrated on what we we're doing. We took it like a, a selfie or two and, uh, and we were very engaging uh, on, on, on a, personal level on, on that that level that was more about the seriousness of of, of you know what's uh, you know I, 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 I don't know it, it, just of life not so much of being on you know the twilight zone or it wasn't that it was the seriousness of life and uh, and the consequences of missing our children or you know that's that's what I engage with and and sort of you know but when we of course once the camera was rolling there was always a little twinkle in both of our eyes you know but that's the love of what we get to do it's uh <laughs> it, you can't I, can, I can't hide it i yeah. know you have been busy as of late in fact don't you have two projects going on right now um what can you tell us about this i uh yeah I, well we've got one is just been released to um amazon prime it's um it's a short film that uh, that I did, and I was a, a sort of a, a a smaller character. I think you'd love it. It's called um, Another Place. So it's on Amazon Prime short film, for from what I understand, and it's in the UK, in the United States as well. Wonderful. And then I just finished doing what is um, a feature film separated into three separate parts, of which each one will be presented. Um, on once again Amazon Prime, and uh, it's called Four Fathers, and I played a a pretty amazing character in this one. Um, uh, yeah, a father with a, a huge beard and a and a yeah, and we only used a little bit of it on camera because it was really just a transitional thing. And, oh, I, I yeah, and but uh, I love that role so very much, and and it's it's so good and. Um, uh, it was so well written and, uh, and, and uh, yeah, so that forefathers is coming. Uh, we've just finished shooting the first uh, of the three uh, parts and uh, uh, yeah, I don't know what, uh, what we're going to be doing with that. And then 
Uh, I have, in fact, been cast in another part that I can't really speak to very much about. Mm -hmm. um, copyright and whatnot, but... Uh, with, with the F logo behind you, right? Uh, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, something I'm, I'm, I'm looking <laughs> really forward to. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's being filmed, uh, at least for the first season, uh, in, in uh, Europe. And so, you know, once this COVID opens up some of the, 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 the borders and that being for our American producers, um, we'll, uh, we'll be able to go there then. So considering we are a tech show, let's play a techie type game with you to finish off our interview here. Um, it, it's simply called Real or Fake. This is where I present you with five tech products and okay. you decide if it's actually a real product or a fake product. Okay, man. You can lose at this game, but there is no prize either way, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. Number one, a water bottle that extracts water from the air. Is it real or is it fake? It's real. Unfortunately not. There is these devices called atmospheric condensers that are larger devices that can pull water from the atmosphere. Um, and, and, and even create uh, enough water to, to fill a lake, um, but nothing the size of a water bottle as of yet. We're hoping though, definitely hoping. Next one, number two, a six pack of beer that is also a gaming computer with a built-in projector and a battery so that you can game and drink anywhere. I can't, yeah. no. No, you don't think? No. It's a real product. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I guess if you're a big beer drinking game player at the same time, you know, sure. <laughs> Bud Light seriously just put this thing out. Uh, it, uh, they made, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking only one or a couple, but they're going to auction them off and give them away. Looks Maybe. like a Bud Light six pack, has two spots to put beer to keep them cold. I love it. Uh, built-in projector, two controllers, and you can sit and play Tekken while beaming it against a wall. I oh, just, that's so wonderful, man. Yeah, I can, uh, you know, I am, I'm having visions of, uh, of water skiing for some reason and, and, yeah, and doing that, you know, at night, you know, on the lake. Yeah, that'd be yep. fun. <laughs> right? Oh, that'd be awesome, wouldn't it? I, I've always been a big proponent of taking my tech out into the wilderness. I think that's great. Yeah, a little campfire <laughs> to the left there, yeah. Yep, absolutely. All right, number three, we saw it in Back to the Future Part 2. Do we yet have hoverboards that actually hover? I have seen some, yes. All right, we, we actually can't buy them, but um, I don't know who the originator of it was, but I saw a video a while back that was Tony Hawk and a bunch of other celebrities. And they had the hoverboard from the movies, the same pink Mattel branding and everything. And they used a, a special type of super cool technology on a metal skate park that no. made it hover. Oh yeah, no, yes. I did see that one. Yeah, cool. Yes, that's yes. right. Yeah. And Tony no, Hawk was, was actually able to drive a hoverboard and, and do some basic tricks on it. The other one that I was thinking about was the one that's got the fans and it's big. Oh, yes. I did not think about that. I was going, you know, the, the sci-fi hovering route, but, but there is absolutely a hoverboard that works with fans and, and, and uh, I, uh, them and, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely. Yeah, re and then there's reminds the, me of the hobgoblin from Star Trek, uh, uh, excuse me, Spider-Man. Yes, exactly. Yes. Goblin yeah, was cool. absolutely That's number four kfc internet connected smart bucket is it real or is it fake uh, i think it's real it's actually real kfc yeah. makes some weird off the wall products 
<laughs> so yes, they've created a smart bucket. It lets users order fried chicken with voice control and then delivers relevant fried chicken news, they say in quotes. Wow. Well, that's great though. Like, you know, and, and does it do it with a, we were talking about drones. Does it fly it and deliver right. it with a drone? Doesn't say anything about that. I'm guessing it'll use a delivery service, but it does say, and it's Bluetooth connectivity offers support for limited integrated connection kinetics, otherwise known as LIC. Oh man, that's so funny. Oh, and all of these things just bring, bring up these, these conjuring of ideas at the lake out camping for some reason. I mean, the last time I ever had freaking chicken with camping product number five and uh the last one of our game today in our conversation lightsabers from star wars are they now real or fake they are now real i saw one cutting through some metal yes like a metal door or something recently just like yeah. they did in the movies and it was funky man like the thing and it's you know it's quite yeah <laughs> yep, yep. No. It's, it's 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 a gas powered device but man it replicates that lightsaber almost perfectly in my opinion oh and it looks good too like they yeah they did a whole thing to it yeah yeah no it's sexy man i like that these are fun questions man Awesome. Well, hey, I, I uh, appreciate you coming on the show. We will have to do it again if you are willing and able. I would love to get you back on. We can play some more tech-centric games and uh, eventually, you know, meet up somewhere near our hometowns in the other side of the world from where I currently am. I'd love to do that. And of course, you know, I have so many other projects on the go that I'll, I'll, I'd love to be able to share them with you as well. I'm so grateful that you've shown an interest and that you've you, you've asked such intelligent and, and thoughtful, thought-provoking questions, uh, you know, ones that, that, that gave me a little, hmm, you know, I appreciate all that. Absolutely. I appreciate you joining me. It was an absolute pleasure to uh, interview you today, Anubis. I mean, Dean, <laughs> I absolutely had a great time, and I really look forward to all of your future projects and uh, for you, you know, showing up on all my other favorite shows, too. Uh, I look forward to seeing you on Facebook and everywhere else as well. Thanks again, Ray. Absolutely. We'll keep in contact. Thank you so much. Okay. Peace.